ultimately, if you're gonna have lasting change in anything, you're really talking about just raising your standards. If you wanna know how to change your life and give it to you in three words, boring as it sounds, raise your standards. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Think of it as everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. I should lose some weight, I should work out more, I should make more calls, I should respond more rapidly to my email, whatever. People love to have their should list be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions. If it does, it's really exciting, but if it doesn't, which is most of the time, eh, it's a little disappointing, but you kind of know it's not going to happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm going to find the way or I'm going to make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things and they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard and they make it a must, they find the way. I'm really going to work hard to stop smoking, but you know, I've been a smoker my whole life and I'm, you know, I am a smoker. I know your days are numbered. You're going to be back smoking cigarettes again because we all act consistent with who we believe we are. I tell people the strongest force, very often people say, well, I can't do that. I'm not that kind of person. And I always say to people, really, when did you define yourself? I mean, really, how many years ago did you come up with what you could and couldn't do in your life? How many years ago? Most people, if they really look at how they're living their life today, it's based on a set of standards, a set of beliefs that they made choices about 10, 20, 30 or more years ago. I mean, very often we made decisions in our youth or very young about what to believe, about what we were capable of, about who we are as a person, and that becomes the glass ceiling, if you will, that controls us. And what you want to do is train a new one. So starting when I was 17, I started doing incantations, not affirmations. Affirmation, you go, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. What's the problem? You haven't changed your what? Physiology. If you don't change your physiology, you won't get anything. So an incantation is not only you speak it, but you embody what you're saying with all the intensity you can. And you do it with enough repetitions that it sticks in your head. Like it's a small world, now the conversation in your head is always the same and it gives you what you want. So you use your body and your voice. So I started doing things. I was working for Jim Rohn, this speaker, and I was 17 years old, and I had earned it $40 a week as a janitor. But I love people and I believe that I put myself in state and I was able to influence people that were far more successful than I was at the time. I would do something that I still do backstage and have done for 23 years because I don't hope I'm going to be in good state, I demand it. So I do an incantation using my whole body and say, I now command my subconscious mind to direct me in helping as many people as possible alive today to better their lives by giving me the strength, the emotion, the persuasion, the humor, the brevity, whatever it takes to show these people and get these people to change their lives now. I was poor, I changed my mindset. I kept doing things, but I never got beyond it. I'd say, wealth is circulating in my life, as wealth flows to me in avalanches of abundance. All my needs, desires, and goals are met instantaneously by infinite intelligence. And I would imagine the abundance of my life and I would feel so grateful. And a year later, I went from making $38,000 a year to making a million dollars a year in one year. But successful people do what failures won't.